A very good evening to all of you. Welcome one and all to the webinar today. Today we are going to talk about the avoid maintenance practices, the right practices, and obviously the wrong ones which we are supposed to avoid for better maintenance strategy. Um, I am Dr. Gopi again uh, on behalf of the webinar to welcome you all. Thank you so much for taking our time and effort. I understand uh, we are going through the pandemic and the situation is not that great around. Uh, every day, but uh, we fight every day, and uh, the best thing what we can do is right now we're spreading some awareness and educating people through this online study. Um, Mr. Anshul and is uh, uh, having some medical emergency due to which we won't be able to take up the session today. But don't worry, we have some technical consultants and our senior uh, staff members from our technical service department. So we'll lead you through the entire presentation and also call for that. So let me introduce, uh, we have first presenter, Mr. Amit Pinti Prasad. Pinti Prasad is around 10 years of experience in the education industry, uh, spread across various sectors. He has worked with many industries in the past and currently he has associated with many as a consultant in technical service department. And we have Mr. Vivesh Kumar, a lot of you might already know Mr. Vivesh. Uh, he has been associated uh, with maintenance for a very, very long time. He holds more than a decade of experience in this thing and he has been working with many industries, but his specific domain has been power and cement. And he has a massive knowledge on the thing and today you guys will understand why he started the presentation and talk to uh, After the presentation is over, we will open the forum for q and round. So I would request everyone to try to in the QA box and not in the chat box because I will be focusing on the questions asked in the QA. So we might miss some of the questions asked in the chat box. So kindly make sure that we drop in your questions during the PPT or after the PPT and we will have half an hour of slot to discuss um, any queries, any questions, any situation that you might come across the presentation. Uh, let me try to show you the QA and let's have an interactive question. Good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to our today's presentation of the webinar. That is the basic of you while maintenance practices. And this subject is applicable to all the sectors because no industries can run without the lubrications. So, we have designed this presentation, this slides of with our experience, which is having some basic practices of human maintenance and the implications of wrong practices, um, the maintenance myths, and how we can achieve the reliability with basic changes in our practices. Let's move. This is the synopsis of webinar, where we have um, segmented the whole chapters into the basic elements, like that reception of new oil, storage and handling, sampling and oil analysis, the conditioning of oil, and our support toward lubrication reliability. We will cover each section with today's. Let's proceed. So before going forward, let's have a poll that you should know that how audience know about their company. So the first question is, does your company have the written SOP and manuals for lubrication management?
reception of new wine. This is the first step when the new barrels or the tanks arrive at your uh, site. And every lieu has the set target illness of lubricant, which might get hampered during the process which is involved prior to reaching your site. So let me just explain the whole process involved before its arrival at your site in just three points. The first one is the blending of lubricant where the base oil and the additives are mixed and during this process there are many contaminants which are uh, get involved in this like the airborne contamination and the particle interactions like uh, uh, the blending is done with the agitation of air or with the slow speed blender. So all this type of lubricants get involved during the process. So uh, the once the lubricant is uh, manufactured system it is then moved to the storage area the storage is done in the large vessels which might lack in the uh, proper designing of the uh, vessels which uh, have some lack of desiccant breeders and the flushing procedure the flushing procedure i can explain you with a very uh, layman example like we i use a refined oil for the cooking and uh, i have a 5 liter gallon in my, at my and uh, once it is over, I keep refilling it with the pouch of the uh, refined points. And after over a time, you will, I will see that there is a thin super fine layer of particles settled at the bottom of the gallon. So, though I cannot see the large tanks and vessel, but this can replicate me that if the oil is again and again stored in the same vessel, there is a chances of contaminate simply down at the uh, bottom of the uh, storage tanks and this contaminated oil now which have like, slightly degraded the target illness by now is now transported to us and during the transportation process there is also an integration of the washers, integration of the particles and uh, the storage area, the storage uh, methods which will directly hamper the transport uh, quality of lubricants. So this is the current practices and we believe that the new oil is considered the new a clean oil but that's not true. So what are the suggested practices to check the new oil? The first one is the new sticker details. If you see the stickers is in very uh, bad shape or it is torn and it is the data that is uh, like a batch, batch number, the manufacturing date, the expiry date which, which we should know as a uh, user is not visible on the sticker. So you can analyze the condition it was stored before reaching to you. The second is the loop test certificate. We must ensure that the test certificate is given by the supplier, loop supplier to you so that you can get the relevant data regarding the formulation and the arrivals and everything related, related to the loop. And we must cross verify the files by doing the basic one-time on-site test that is the crackle test to check the moisture is present in the oil or not. The viscosity to check that is it the right correct oil which is we, uh, as per our requirement or the particle test to check the contaminant of the oils. So with, with this basic test and with this basic steps you can check the oil quality and their um, effectiveness at the very starting level. Now the storage of lubricant. So, you, I assume that everyone has known that the barrel breathe, yes, the barrel breathe because there is a temperature variation throughout our day. The temperature in the uh, daytime is not as uh, the night time. So this variation in temperature causes the barrel to breathe and when the lubricants are stored in the outside area, there are the environmental conditions. The, ambient atmosphere which is given to the uh, barrels which include the heat, the water, rain, the moisture, the dust which will all get into the uh, mix with your lubricant and degrade the quality of your um, lubricants at the very starting level and before it starts about the huge shelf life the, it's the quality, the target is get degraded. So, so what we suggest? The first suggestion is of course you should restore the lubricant in the close climatic condition as much as possible.
information. In case if it is not able to uh, store in the, you won't have that facility at the plant. If you are using uh, that hardware storage, we must have some points that uh, uh, barrel should be kept in the nine to three o'clock position to combat the barrel breathing. So that the oil is behind the bunks and the breathing is stopped. And if it is uh, uh, kept in a vertical position, it should be some little tilted so that the water should not collect at the bunges area. And the basic thing is, uh, is to cover the uh, barrel with the plastic cover so that the particles, the moisture should not get entered into the bunges and affect the oil. And a regular inspection is uh, should be suggested so that to uh, detect that any leakages is there or any chances that uh, lubricants are leaking out of the barrels. So this is the storage of lubricant. Now the third section is the handling. Once your uh, service life of barrel is going to start, this is the section handling of lubricant. So what are the current practices in this? First of all, every industry have this concept of one for all. Means one barrel can be used in all their terms. And I will say, I have seen that barrels are not even stored or um, kept in a good way uh, and uh, the barrels um, sticks to the dirt and very uh, limbs of the uh, clothes which is used to clean them. Uh, so this is the condition of barrel pump. One oil top of container can be used for all trade. You can see in a picture this type of container which is taken from an industry was used for topping up the oil. And in the left side you can see the condition of barrel. Barrels are also in the open cell means if it is used or by if it is not used the budges are open the caps are open which is directly giving the contamination into the uh, barrels one filter card can be used in all the equipments and i will say very few companies are very few i will not say uh, very few companies using this uh, machine filter card to clean the oils in the, in the, in the machines and one filter card can be reused in the, all the machines which is, should be avoided as much possible. One sampling accessories can be reused as many times which is also not acceptable because sampling, once sampling is done, the tube which was used before is always already uh, used as a cleanless level and other sample will contaminate it. So apart from this concept, the accessory used are in the improperly, improperly managed or of substandard. So this is the current practices for handling of lubricant. Now we will see that what is the suggested. So uh, hermetically sealed top of containers are always suggested, which means that there is no chances of leakages from the oil uh, before topping up, and there should be not opening without. And you can uh, fill the bottle and. Uh, the machines uh, into the machines. Practice the method of color coding the machines. Color coding the machine, I will give you an example. We can use like uh, we are using VG32 and we give a VG32 oil a triangle, red triangle and that red triangle should be pasted on the barrel of the machine uh, loop, the barrel pump, the top of container and the same red triangle should be pasted on the machine which is being used by this new. So even if the new person or an unknown person comes to your uh, company for this work, should not get confused and uh, contamination or can be done, cross contamination can be done by because of human error. So this method is very much needed for the industry. And apply the best practices for you. So whenever I think of you, the picture which comes in my mind is my kitchen. Because in kitchen, we maintain the utmost cleanliness level. And we keep the separate place for uh, spices, separate place for oils, separate place for uh, uh, keeping our accessories. So likewise, we have to maintain our loop room like this, like marking of each loop section, display of uh, the loop charts which are available at the side, epoxy floor, and control contaminations, and dedicated loop handling equipment.
then several other factors like ventilation those are very important for the lube wound management okay so the last is the investing training of your lube technicians this is a very important because this is this is at the end going to upgrade your existing system and keep your engineers updated with regards to the lubrication self flare degradations and your component life acting because of the lubricant degradation so this is a very important point file analysis the current practices you can see some pictures this is the live pictures where we have seen the uh, the technicians taking the sample into the bucket or the, this type of container jars you will say and um, so there in the in our industry there is a very lack of awareness regarding to the taking sampling out of the machine and the report till to the report interpretations of the uh, sampling so uh, there are many factors related to this uh, sampling and uh, you can see this picture of you uh, oil analysis lab many industries are lacking in the oil analysis on site lab and if they have they are not very much maintained which uh, at the end uh, uh, adding the moisture levels or contamination into the sample and the a good representative sample can give you the right report so uh, sampling is a very important factor and the analysis is not done with very sincerity instead of that the report is just filed up in the their files so uh, this is the current practices and what we suggest is the um file analysis sampling procedure for uh, standard procedure for sampling as per iso 1171 should be followed we say that is good representative sample should be taken at the downstream of the lines and uh, at the local uh, elbow and where is the 4m should be followed maximize the data density minimize the data density uh, data disturbance maximize consistency maximize the relevance relevance means the data the samples should be taken at the right position right location and the analysis should be done with the very proper training and the uh, report interpretation should not be just piled up it should be uh, reflected to your further actions and uh, this is uh, related to the sample taking and uh, list of the process Required as per the machine, its frequency, report interpretation, which can show contamination level, useful life of uh, useful life of oil and component life. So for that also a proper training should be mandatory for the analysis of. Oil. With that, uh, we are going to a second point. This is the suggested list of. that should be done uh, this is the frequency also mentioned in the test like an amount kinematic viscosity test should be done on the monthly basis and like was that now on what i would request the locates to continue for the slides
Hello, everyone. Am I audible to all? Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Bhakti and Kitty. Uh, really, it's a very tough time when we are not together to talk to each other, especially when we are doing this talk about is very great. Why we can share our ideas and uh, we can talk to each other in the virtual way. And uh, I was thinking that, uh, literally saying, uh, I am not a guy to paint or present, but yeah, it's an beauty for me, but Pretty Madam did very good. And let us see what happens if we don't uh, follow the instructions we don't follow the procedures for the preventive blue oil to get it contaminated. The picture is in front of you and uh, you can see the condition of the bearing which got totally rusted and it is damaged badly. There are a number of reasons like the contaminated environment or uh, uh, lubrication practices Lubrication practices is not single uh, term, but over lubrication, under lubrication, associated lubrication, everything will come into the picture. Then something is there which is not under lubrication, like component we are ineffective seals. Yes, they are still in lubrication. Because seal we are component, we are diamond seal, strong lubricant, everything is under or waste lubrication practice. So let us see further. We will discuss in detail on the status C. The type of contaminants. Uh, like uh, if evil is agreed in the system, till the time we don't control its supporters, like particles, water, glycol, air, heat, fuel. There are n number of reasons which can contaminate the oil. So, evil is there. Let us see how to better. Here we can see some picture. Uh, what is the effect of evil's suns like oxidation, acidity, stuffing, corrosion, aeration, cavitation, varnish? These all are part of the evil or parts of the contamination and we can control it very easily. We will come uh, on control method on what? But it is very surprising number that 70 percent of premature machine failures are due to only contamination. That is blue oil contamination, not about the uh, some other contamination. Yeah, there are some failures in the power and uh, cement mineral industry due to water contamination. That is a different subject. But as per the uh, market survey and data uh, calculated, 70% of the premature failures because only of the 70% seems a big number. We will see how the number is realistic. Let's see. Now we have sorry. In my full screen visible. Yes, sir. Just I was confirming it because the uh, network issue is there, it's raining heavily outside. So just confirmed it. Yeah. So now, what should be contamination control strategy? When we talk about the strategy, it looks it is a management responsibility, not at all. It's the user's responsibility to control it because user is the only guy or only person who drives the thing on the ground. So. Uh, First, we will say uh, in 
our system, how can we provide a solution which will, which will stop the contamination in this? Like we use silica breather in our, our oil tank. Silica breather can control some moisture, but not the mechanical impurity. Can we go for the h 2 gate or a proper breather with proper sizing? Because breather itself is a subject when we can talk for the hour. What should be the micron level? How much should be the number of layers? And again, what should be the location of breather? Shall it be on the top of the tank or it should be extended to a clean environment? These points are uh, often neglected. What should be our target to maintain the cleanness in the normal level? Like if we check okay, within six months, net 12 is there, okay, make it down to net six, net six, okay, very fine. What happens after 15 days or one month? Do we have a system to check it at the right time? And what should be frequency? What Mr. Madden mentioned in the previous slide. Then contamination control program. Because we are talking about the environment which is having just particles and moisture. Can we control it? Suppose we are talking about a cement plant vertical mill. It is in the open, open environment. We cannot control it. Yes, but if we come to turbine manual tank, yes, we can control. We can put systems which is expel air out so that external air will come in or we can put a system in the tank that will make a positive pressure inside the tank to expel the contaminants out of the tank. So, every control system is there in place, but engineering control will be on the primary because whatever we control with the human support will not last or will not be very much reliable because we humans are always making mistakes. Not make it, but yeah, engineering control will be the best. And at the last, if something goes wrong, then we have to go for reclaim it or bring it back to the original condition that is oil reclaiming program. If contamination is there, mixture is there, or, or acid number is there, varnish is there, there may be number of things which can be brought back to the original condition, then again we have to think about reclaiming programs. And what we do is, practically I am saying, we go for the L1 basis or means lowest beta level. We are not aware that what they are going to do, what the methodology they are going to implement on the site for the moisture control, we can go various method, like we can do nitrogen capping or we can put LVDA or we can go for the coalescer system. But out of these three, which one is best for us? We should be first asked the expert who is known or who is the expert in this area. Because he will suggest you like a doctor that you should take paracetamol or what AMG. 150 or 250 or 500 and we often make this mistake. This again, reconditioning definition. It is normally taken as uh, that uh, reconditioning means uh, we are regenerating the oil. This is not regeneration of the oil because oil once lost cannot be regenerated. But yes. Oil is in the bad condition, we can bring it back, back to original condition. So, how to restore the oil is fully a technical challenge and it can be done only by the experts. Like, uh, if we change the oil, like simply saying uh, in a government organization, I mean, uh, for a PSU, 
between selling turbines to the another PSU, they have 10,000 liter of control fluid and they are changing the control fluid every 6 years or 7 years. This cost around 2.6 crores with the investment of 20 lakhs or 50 lakhs if we can sustain it for next 25 years what is wrong in that? This looks like why we should spend 20 lakhs right now. This is capital expenditure and uh, this should be there because it will serve the purpose which oil is built for the life. Control fluid is not like that. You replace it. No, it is built for the life. It has to serve 25 years without replacement and after 25 years we have to recheck it about the uh, I can say components or additives and if they are well it will serve another 15 years of RLA residual life assessment. So RLA is done in plants after 15 years small RLA then measure RLA is done after 25 years. But this oil should not be the changes. So it is uh, understanding issue. We are saving now in the purchasing of a conditioning equipment and we are losing 10 or 15 times more than this in upcoming 5 or 10 years. And we will keep on losing the same value in future. So the awareness level is very important and this webinar is always for that, just to spread the awareness. Now, liquid reconditioning, as uh, we discussed in the last slide itself, oil and extension increase many machine reliability. And when we are talking about machine reliability, it is a surprising figure. The plant is changing 10 servo valves in a year, which is costing him 50 lakhs or more than that. But they are not ready, ready to spend 5 lakh or 10 lakh for the equipment reliability that is due to oil pressing or oil conditioning. Because this seems a luxury item. Even the servo is not there in the car, okay, car is working fine. Yes, but there is something luxury. That is extra cost. But in this condition, in lubrication system, luxury is nothing. It's just a requirement. And time and effort take for oil change out because uh, whenever we change the oil, it takes units shut down for one day or two days. That cost and oil cost is also, also there. Then if you replace the oil, you have to follow the government norms for the, for the status waste disposal. Then again, very vital thing. If we are sustainability lover, then we should not expose any hazardous waste or carbon in the environment. Any disposal of the hydrocarbon in the environment is a crime till the time it is not mandatory. So, replacement of oil is uh, a criminal activity and it will kill sustainable development. Yeah, it's a poll. Let's vote for it and let us see the result. Time is yours, twice is yours.
want to vote as per the uh, discussion please share the actual practice so that the uh, output will be known to us and uh, we are not going to give it any punishment if practice is wrong oh, oh fantastic result uh, external filtration machine 53% and uh, replacement only 31% and uh, really very sorry to say uh, 31% who has well, uh, voted for this we are here to support you and the 53% who all are going for the external filtration machine in this case we will serve you at our level best so and remaining to sections we are with you but uh, i just commented for the major portion we just will come to next slide uh, till the time voting is not completed Our support to you means uh, what we can serve, and uh, this is not the best because improvement is is uh, always appreciated. Presently, this is the best. First one is FS series, what we call it is for the contamination removal, only solid contamination removal. This is uh, the small. Brother of flushing system, but this is exactly filtration system. This is a kidney loop system. It will work in your running plant, and uh, there will not be any disturbance in the operation. There will not be any disturbance in the generation or production. And this system doesn't take much of oil quantity inside it. So you don't have to put extra quantity of oil in the system before starting the filtration. So this is a fantastic system. In this system, we have single stage, double stage, three stage, means to ask and how precise you want the result. We will serve you. We have the option, and these are very cheap. In the comparing the oil volume stored. Even these are cheaper than the one or two barrel of oil. Yeah, this system is very fine, and uh, we are proud of this system because we call it LVDS, low vacuum dehydration system. What is low vacuum? There is no definition of what low because four is lower than the five. Or five may be lower than the six. What is low vacuum dehydration system? In the market, you can see number of players who are selling it. Low vacuum dehydration system. What is definition of low is not defined. We can bet you 700 mm of HP, 700 millimeter HP mercury column will be the vacuum. It is. Almost, I can say at the par because 760 is the highest, very absolute vacuum that cannot be achieved by any system. Is it? But 700 mm is too high, and we use this system with foam sensor so that in the high vacuum, foaming is very high. So normal equipment manufacturer keep low vacuum since their tank will get filled and oil will come out of the system and it will spill here and there. We use 700 mm of mercury in our system with a foam sensor, so no single drop of oil should come out of the system. And at the high level of the foaming, vacuum will be killed for few seconds, and again it will attain the uh, same value. And in this system, 
you have option for a mechanical filtration system in the downstream of the oil. So at the same time you can remove the moisture, you can remove the solid contaminants. So we have the option if you want to remove only moisture, it's great. And if you want to remove both, that is most appreciable because there will not be much of the cost implication. Hardly 20-30 percent, hardly I am saying. This I am not from the commercial side, uh, but still I can say this may be the implication. Our support to the control, uh, contamination control, oil dehydration system in a different way. The system is getting adopted across the world now it is. This is what happens, there are many systems in which moisture ingress is very sudden. Like uh, in 5 hours, suddenly moisture level went from 100 ppm to 500 ppm. It means this is free moisture which came due to any operational mistake or any maintenance mistake or maybe the equipment got damaged. So for the free moisture as well as for the emulsified moisture, we have a very good education, dedicated system that is called coalescence system in which water and oil mix, mixture passes through a coalescence system. In the coalescence, smaller particles get Joined together to make a big particle, and due to density difference, it will get settled down at the bottom of the tank and where we can drain it. So, emulsified moisture or free moisture will be, uh, I can say, uh, will be accumulated at one location so that we can drain it. Through. Yeah, definitely, this is not going to. Of the purpose if moisture is dissolved. But cases of dissolved moisture is very, very less compared to emulsified and free moisture. So we have demonstrated this in our lab. We have separate RD lab. From the 50,000 people, 50 and again people, 50,000 ppm to 500 ppm within one hour. At the rate of 100 LPM, less than the 500 in one hour. We did it and we are very confident we can uh, support you if you need this or we can propose you. Again, uh, this is all dehydration system, LVDS 6. Trick's name is uh, looking very tricky. This is actually abbreviation. Can uh, the reduction to ion exchange? Can is total acid number. So while we are talking about the uh, control fluid or EH oil fluid or phosphate ester fluid, sometimes we call it P P fluid or FRF. There are many names, but all are just used. In the PSU as well as uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, whatever the manufacturers are of the field, especially turbine, they use it. Uh, so this is very typical machine which is having four functions. This can remove the solid contaminants, it can remove the dissolved moisture, you can see five more. You must see fine moisture, free moisture. This can do the capping of your oil tank with inert nitrogen gas and dry nitrogen. And the fourth function this can reduce the AC. Yes, this has a built system having uh, resins inside. And this will reverse the process of acid formation. The acid will be converted back to moisture, which will be taken care by the two systems provided in this, that is LVDH and TACS.
means uh, low vacuum dehydration and nitrogen scattering. So this machine is all in one package. And uh, very glad to share this machine is demonstrated in such condition where this should not perform. Which we thought that okay, can we go 0.25 or 0.3 or 0.4 like that, maximum 0.5. This has performed at 0.9 no. 1 no. 1.5 again no. This has performed at TAN 2.0. Within three months, we brought it down to 0.15 with the help of this machine. This is a fantastic machine. You are feel free to ask the question about it. And you are feel free to see its, its demonstration at your side. Really, this machine is appreciable, and in the world, this is one of its kind. We can bet on this. No machine can perform all the four activities at one time, as this machine did. Now it's time for voting. Let's vote. Vote at the most because uh, your voting is not uh, for a uh, government making or something, MLA selection. This is for our awareness level so that uh, the another part of presentation which is not much long, it's very short. We can uh, cover the uh, queries as uh, time is reaching uh, at its level. So, vote at the max to guide the presentation or webinar in its way. Please. that is there and everyone can see uh, yeah <coughs> so most of the answer goes to particle contamination and uh, water contamination is also not lagging much behind. But all of the above is uh, really uh, it was expected but not at this level. So very good to see the full results and this TRIX, this fix machine is there to support you. What type of contamination it is? It will take care of stand alone. No need to go for any special methodology or any other method. This TRIX will serve the entire requirement alone. Thank you so much uh, for your voting and uh, it will take uh, another uh, two seconds in the slide. Wait for uh, another two seconds. We will get it done. Yes. Yeah, it's working now. 
like uh, what are the practices, what were the trends in the last few months or year, then what we can optimize, can we optimize the frequency of duplication, whether it can increase or decrease, then contamination control strategies like killing of the system, putting positive pressure inside the work hall or inside the equipment, I guess there are many things. Oil analysis program. What should be the frequency of the oil testing? That should be optimized. Because if you test the oil of the whole booster oil form every 15 days, that is waste of money, waste of time. Every one month, again, it is waste of time. There is no point to check quality of booster oil and It should be checked, it, it should be replaced, replaced in three months. This is a fact because it, it is having a reservoir of 1.6 liters. So apart from the checking and condition monitoring, it should get replaced every single day. Like that, we can optimize. The wine also should get checked every 15 months, sorry, 15 days or 15 months. We don't because there is no written guideline for any manufacturer. They simply say you have to maintain. NAS level 6 or ISO 17, 14, 12, like that, they will give you a number. How to maintain it and how to check it, there is no clear guideline. In the mills, we do. Uh, NAS 12 and greater will come often. Whenever we check the mill gearbox oil, we don't check the seals which is at the bottom of the mill. If we are going for the BRM, what is condition of bottom seal? Are they intact? In the case of LP heaters, we keep it on running. There is no oil, oil purification system. There is no checking frequency even most of the power plants. So we are ready to optimize this. In the last part, what we have already discussed, oil waste disposal. Oil waste disposal includes Oil, soap, cotton waste, and waste oil. But uh, with the real waste oil part will be very less because we are not going to throw the oil often and uh, we will reuse it or we can recondition it for next utilization. Duplication assessment. Uh, this uh, Piti Madam already discussed. Uh, during her part of presentation, that is uh, a standard practices we should adopt to avoid uh, any case of cross contamination or uh, uh, contaminant with uh, ingression. Or we can say totally for the rural management, what standard practices we should adopt. And Priti Madam has explained over it, so we will not waste time on this. There are a few cases. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we cannot share the name, but uh, you can see uh, with the cost of less than a lollipop, we could save the cost of an ice cream. So, not only in one plant, across the country, there are Dozens of plants, not dozens, we can count it in, in, we can go to hundreds of plants nowadays. Number has uh, increased and uh, we have saved the roads and the roads with only simple tip. Simple you put one filter cartridge of this particular specification, your problem will get resolved. No need to go for a shutdown, no need to go for unplanned shutdown and don't go for any predictive maintenance, but go for a proactive maintenance. And uh, I wanted to say this during the poll, but uh, I was waiting for slides, that uh, there is a difference between uh, proactive and predictive maintenance. 
nowadays RPM is uh, very popularly adopted. Reliability is best measurement. Reliability is best measurement is a very big section. Uh, just we captured a few percent of it today. But yeah, in on the upcoming webinars, we will try to cover maximum part of RPM. And before RPM, proactive maintenance is uh, very good. This proactive maintenance, people say that what is written on the manual, it is uh, adoptable. What is written on the manual is as per the standard condition, not tropicalized and not as per land of, sorry, law of land. Where we are standing is important. We are at Tutti Kori, we are near to seashore, where moisture level is very high. When we are standing at an island FS, at Lose, we are at the seashore. But while we are at Balto Cordoba, we are almost on the center of the country, apart from the seashore. Moisture level will be low during the normal days. Like that, there are a number of things. I just gave a few names. There are a number of conditions. By talking about the MOT, yes, if there is water leakage in uh, any system near to main oil tank, will increase the humidity level there. If water is spilled on the ground, it will get evaporated or absorbed by the air and it will increase the humidity. So, oil contamination level go very high. There are Many factors that can be covered only while we do assessment and while we do uh, calculations as per the available data or achieved data. So this is second case study you can see. In, uh, okay, sorry to interrupt, uh, uh, we have a little less time left because we have come around uh, two questions being asked. I would request you to hurry up and finish the paper in five minutes so we can uh, yeah. allow the minutes to be Okay, 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 sure, sure, sure. Okay, thank you for alarming me because <laughs> it was necessary. Yeah. So we can uh, see many case studies and case shots. And uh, uh, these all case shots are available on our website. So you can very well visit our website. And uh, there you can find number of articles regarding uh, condition monitoring of the lubrication or uh, lubrication related equipment or oil conditioning. There are number of articles you can go through it and uh, I think you will really enjoy visiting our website. Yeah, so thank you, Pati Madam, Pati Madam and all the audience. Uh, to stay with us and uh, now it's time for question answer session. So handing over to okay madam. Madam please uh, can you support us in this session. Thank you so much uh, everyone for your questions. Thank you Vijay and uh, for your presentation. Uh, so we'll quickly uh, get on to the questions and uh, we have uh, Mr. Manish Shavasa who wants to know where and where is damage that naturally and inevitably occurs as a result of normal wear or age. How to minimize this without manual inspection or the wear it Very, very, very good, good question. And uh, uh, due to network issue, I shoot off my video. I will come back. Yeah, so Mr. Manish, uh, natural wear and tear uh, often occurs in the system and it is uh, not in our control. But yes, if uh, we can control the uh, contaminants, especially solid contaminants, which are scratching the system. Means, uh, suppose a particle of 10 micron is running in the oil, it will try to scratch the system. And uh, in the case of hydrodynamic lubrication or Last two hydrogen lubrication, 
is uh, very vulnerable. You, you, you cannot believe uh, that uh, it is more dangerous than a bullet fired by a pistol. And the moisture contaminant, they uh, expand or they explode uh, while they are on the low tube. So they cause cavitation and cavitation means again some metal particles come out of the system. So to avoid uh, metal debris uh, in the oil or uh, wear and tear prevention, just we have to control contaminant solid and uh, moisture. Acid will have different impact and that will not generate uh, metal particles. Yeah, man. Just for a second. Okay. Uh, Yogi, can you please uh, stop your screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is from uh, Thai, and uh, um, I don't know who you are seeing, but they want to know is there expiry date in new oil? Uh, if it is, how many years without opening the bag? So I think the new container of new oil what is the expiry date is what you want to know. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, uh, you are very correct. And uh, there is a defined expiry uh, date, but yeah, definitely it is a shelf life. And yeah, for the particular oils, which are not commonly used like Indian oil or specialized application oil, normal oil doesn't have any expiry date and uh, shelf life is defined in a standard condition. Like if we talk about the SP32, it is having shelf life of infinite, not one year or two year or ten. But yes, if this is stored in open and barrels are breathing, then the life will be in a couple of hours. Uh, someone wants to know how to avoid dust particles in lubricants in operating machinery. Yeah, uh, this is an interesting subject. First of all, we have to check uh, the pressure inside the chamber where oil is circulating or floating. Housing pressure is known, and if it is above atmospheric pressure, there will not be any chance for dust in this. Yeah, if it is in the negative pressure, like in the case of most of the system, uh, having uh, large reservoirs, we maintain micro-negative pressure. So this micro-negative pressure attracts atmospheric air to get into the system. And this is the main reason for dust in this. So to avoid any dust in waste, check your seal condition, check your breather condition and check the pressure inside your system. These three points will be enough. Uh, let's take the next one from Mr. Praveen Kumar. What are the options to store lubricants at shop floor data? Yeah, uh, lubricants and storage as a soft floor area is questionable by uh, management as well as by ISO authorities. First of all, you should be have secondary contaminant on which you can place the barrel. These secondary contaminants are there because if any spillage happens, they will uh, accumulate the oil within them. Then the second point, whether the storage area is equipped enough with the fire control system. So if we are exploring the oil, it should be having uh, fire bulb, rupture system, then again hydrant lines, and class C, uh, fire protection system. Especially I am saying, it should be class C at least. So after these all three points, we can explore the oil in and add shock. Okay. Um, Imandi Ramu wants to know how to fix the use oil failure limit for physiotherapy. 
how much he get tagged. It is not like that. We should use torque range having value of newton meter. And what is recommended by the OEM in the manual? Like uh, someone recommend 705 newton meter, or someone can recommend 1900 newton meter. Depends on their design. And second part is selection of gasket. Because in the case of oil, normally we do any gasket, whether it is. Type 21, 23, 34, 48, 56, 59, we don't care what style we are going to do. First of all, style should not really be of two digits, it should be of three digits. Number, first digit should be either one or two. Then remaining two number, we can choose as per the recommendation, like 23 is for the water. But we also put it for oil. So by seeing the gasket color itself, we can define what gasket we should put. Please uh, uh, display a chart of gasket numbers along with the application in the uh, your application area so that user will not make a mistake. And uh, about the working principle of ESP, uh, sorry, uh, ELC is just like ESP, electrostatic principle detector where there are two plates positively charged and negatively charged dust particles are crossing through it uh, with the oil media and since dust particles either will have a positive charge or negative charge they will get attracted to the opposite plate and they will stick to the plate so fresh oil will go out of the system and this particle will stick to those, uh, I can say, charged plates. And in uh, after a several hours or day, depends on the contamination level, and the kilo voltage of plates will get down. It, it, it will come down because uh, as soon as particle will keep on depositing, the breakdown voltage or the dipage distance between the and negative plate will be squeezing. So there will be a small short circuiting and system water will come down. So at that time we have to replace replace the uh, collecting plates. And this is very cheap method and very cost efficient method but not applicable uh, for the critical oil because in the high voltage there, are, uh, there is a chance Get additive. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, that is a nice explanation. I hope uh, it's got the answer. Anand Kasali wants to know what is the replacement frequency for some synthetic oils of type poly or ST oils like Solid 120 used in screw chillers having R134 a refrigerant gas. Neither the manufacturer through compressor nor the manufacturer of new oil. CPI Corporation has given any replacement frequency offer. And this is really a question which uh, I came across uh, hundreds of times during my working tenure in, uh, as uh, a maintenance engineer. And uh, especially killer compressors, they don't mention the replacement. Uh, schedule. But as a uh, maintenance practice, most screw compressors should run with the same oil beyond 5% running hours. This is a benchmark data. And if we are working with 134A range, then it is very essential to replace the oil before the limit. It is not like that, okay, chiller is working fine, so can we run it for few more days? No way, zero. We have to do it before 500 hours or at least after 500 hours. <coughs> Thank you so much for that answer. Uh, Tata Masuri wants to know how frequent to use this blower located on large blue reservoirs. Then what I heard in mist blower, MISP, am I right? Yes, sir, that's correct. Mist blower on large reservoir, not 
is advisable and uh, should not be operated in any circumstances apart from the fire condition. These are used uh, in uh, some cost uh, saving machines where we don't put a separate uh, oil temperature uh, reconditioning system or uh, any system to bring the oil temperature low. So these mesh systems are very vulnerable. We should avoid it as, as much as we can. All right. Uh, Mr. Wagari wants to know what will be mass value for newly purchased oil and how much PPM of moisture can be present in the new oil? Can we use new oil directly to system? And there are a few more people who have asked a similar question uh, about the new oil and you know directly uh, refilling into the my humble request to all the person who are questioning, please uh, don't get me beaten by the oil selling company. Uh, <laughs> because the fresh oil data sheet shows that the oil condition is very good, like NAS 6 at least, and moisture level should be less than 80 ppm. But when it reaches to site due to transport issue, due to uh, packaging issue or dealer warehouse issue, it gets deteriorated. So NAS 6 and less than 80 ppm is desirable, you can very well check on the data sheet. And never believe that the oil which is in your hand as new oil is good oil. This is not possible at all till the time you have a separate pipeline from the refinery to your Very well, Okay, um, <clears throat> we have the uh, next question again from Mr. Manshu. Uh, you mentioned about the sampling point. He wants to know what if the sampling point is not available. Okay. Uh, in the oil tanks, normally a drain oil and uh, either in one top of plug is provided. Dedicated sampling line, what is provided or what is supposed to supply by the manufacturer is the bottom. That is totally wrong. There is an stand there is a standard defined by the ISO that what should be the sampling location for smaller tank, it should be at the mid of the tank. For the bigger tank, what should be depth of the uh, sampler or sampling tube which is going inside the oil. So we have to go for that standard and again, what is the quality of sampling water? Is it super clean, ultra clean, or just clean? So, if there are many reasons, and we will try to cover all these points in detail in our upcoming seminars. Stay with us, we will come back. Today, uh, Sushil Kumar wants to know how to store hydraulic cylinder and how much oil be inside. Hydraulic cylinder during storage. Storage of hydraulic cylinder is, uh, I can say, is a very typical process because uh, there are actuating mechanism in this and these are oil filled. So if we are storing it presently, then oil will be at the bottom side to air, air fingers, maybe from the top side of the seal. If we store it vertically, then there will be load on the piston and uh, there will be seal passing. In the due course of storage, uh, cylinder will come down on the base of it, it, its piston head. So, storing of the cylinder is different. First, we have to see how long we have to store. If we have to store for one week or one month, we have to adopt a separate method. And if we kept it as our uh, capex or uh, vital component that can be used or as an influence item, then the storing method is very typical. Hanging the housing with a support and leaving the piston free to air. So, um, specifically, we can talk on it because uh, it will take very long time to explain all three methods. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, let us take the last question. Uh, we have a problem with moisture in turbine oil. What is the most suitable method to remove moisture from system of 20 kL capacity? If uh, MOT capacity is 20 kL, uh, there is not a big deal to remove the moisture. But we have to know that what is the tendency uh, to ingress. Like that, uh, suppose you have uh, land sea leakage, there will be at least 200-300 uh, liters of moisture every day. But if you have working cooler leakage, you may have one or two liter per day or thousand liter per day. First, we have to conclude what is the nature of moisture ingress. Then we can definitely make a plan that if moisture ingress level is very high, we can do coalescer system. If ingress level is very low, we can do we, we can use LVDH. Or if this is normal moisture coming from the environment, we can do capping of the tank. So first we have to conclude uh, the nature of moisture in this. Yeah. Thank you so much for the such great answers and I am sure our people who have asked have uh, got their questions uh, you know, and ready for it. Uh, we still have a lot of questions coming in and a lot of questions which are unanswered. Please don't worry, we will reach out to each one of you personally via email. WhatsApp, or we would draft an FAQ combining all of the questions and answers that we have covered and not covered in the webinar, and we would share the entire file with you over the email and LinkedIn. I would request you guys to keep uh, following us on LinkedIn because that's the platform we use, and uh, Midland Systems Private Limited is the page which you can look out for. Also, try to subscribe to our newsletter to stay updated about technical articles, awareness, lot of educational days, uh, knowledge we keep on sharing, a lot of case studies and case shots and success stories to discuss with you, which we couldn't do it uh, in one string of time today. So kindly subscribe to our uh, newsletter, go on the website and on the blog page you will find the link there. And if you have any particular situation taking place in your plan, you want to have a consultation call or a technical call with our technical service department, write down an email to us, inquiry at minimap.com, inquiry at minimap.com, that's the email ID, which again you will find on the website. So we will have a next webinar soon in coming 15 days, which will be most likely uh, to be on uh, uh, further detail that to getting the point. Today was about genetics, about new world linking structures. The next webinar will be focusing on a particular type of policy and how to maintain that. So stay tuned with us and thank you so much for your time as well for making this an interactive session. Hope you all stay very healthy and safe. Wish you guys a very good day. Thank you all.